Haiti's unelected prime minister says he will resign. Ariel Henry announced his intention to step down on social media. He was installed as Haiti's prime minister following the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse in 2021. Henri's rise to power was initially supported by a key group of countries, including Canada and the U.S. But under Henri's leadership, the nation has spiraled further into violence and chaos. Armed gangs seized control of whole neighborhoods, stormed prisons and hospitals, and laid siege to seaports and airports. Residents in Port-au-Prince reportedly celebrated Henri's resignation, but he won't officially step down until a presidential transition council is established. Bob Ray is Canada's ambassador to the United Nations. He's in New York. Bob Ray, uh, thanks for speaking with us again. Pleasure to be with you. Um, Ariel Henry's resignation is contingent upon a transition council being installed. What is your sense on how quickly this can happen? Well, I think uh, that it's really now up to the Haitian political parties and all those involved in the discussions about this transition process to seize the reins and decide, decide they're going to move forward. Um, I think it's critically important that that happen, but it's really up to the Haitian actors to make that decision. Um, Prime Minister Henri is still the Prime Minister until the Council is formed. There's no gap in the authority of the uh, of the government. And um, it, it's important that we, we move forward if that's the will of the of the political parties and the Haitian people. Um, we've been through a long process of mediation and negotiation for the last several months, indeed even longer than that, to try to be of assistance to the parties in coming to a, a conclusion. But it's uh, it's been difficult getting there, um, but here we are. So let's, let's hope that this is something that can have a beneficial impact on uh, what's happening in Haiti. Well, the challenge, I guess, is, is Prime Minister Henri did not and does not enjoy the support of the Haitian public. So how confident are you that this transition council uh, will be seen as legitimate and might enjoy, enjoy the public support it needs uh, to do the job? Well, it's right. I mean, we have to have a process to get to an election. Mm. It's really difficult to do that without getting uh, the support of the political parties and others to get you there. Um, and we're not going to pick a name out of the hat to... Uh, to become the next prime minister, um, it, it, it it's just it's something that we we've the limited number of choices that you have in a situation like this, and then we've got the security situation uh, that is um, that is challenging everyone. So it it, it is I think important to uh, show some confidence as we go forward, and encourage people to come forward and serve. Um, but the key thing is we've got to build the momentum that takes us to an election. And we've also got to make sure that we are able to deal with the gang situation sufficiently that we've got enough security to have a to have an election. Um, so it's it's a it's a very it's a very difficult challenge. Um, I most of the polling that I've seen um, from various sources is pretty clear that um, the security is the number one issue for everybody, um, and that people want to see assistance to the Haitian National Police that will have a positive impact on what the gangs are doing. And I think that's something that the government needs to focus its attention on and needs to succeed. One of the challenges that Mr. Henri had was that he was not able to mobilize sufficient support um, to, to, get, uh, to get at the criminality problem, which is right now the key, the key issue. Um, the gangs are, are taking over the country and and they're fighting among themselves. They're fighting between groups um, and they all have criminal enterprises where people get kidnapped and then, you know, they get paid to that. They, they're in the drug business, they're in the arms business, they're in the people trafficking business. It's what you call gangs and um, they're, they need to be dealt with. They need to be dealt with, but they're also playing a role in enforcing this change, right, because of the situation in, in the capital. So what role do the gangs play in this transition? I mean, will they need to approve this in some form, participate it, be consulted in some form? I mean, how do you move ahead with the change with the gang situation the way it is? Well, I think that's something that the authorities in, uh, in, in Haiti are really going to have to deal with. I mean, I think there's a whole 
game strategy that's required. Um, you got to remember that most of the membership of the gangs are under the age of 20. Um, so we're looking at basically older kids who are recruited into these gangs, um, boys and girls, young adults. And we've got to provide um, alternatives for them. We've got to get them off off this particular path because it's a terrible path to be on. And it's like our work on child soldiers. We, you know, we did that for a long time. We're now going to have to do this even more with the gang crisis in uh, in Haiti. Um, it, it it's not about the gangs approving improve, approving or becoming political. Whether they become political actors or not, I don't know. Uh, there are some. I think going to have to be some rules as to who gets to run in an election um, because you you've got to have some standards there in terms of. What, what makes for an acceptable candidate. I, I wonder when you look at where the situation is right now, uh, Ambassador, you know, in the aftermath of Jovenel Moise's assassination, Canada supported Ariel Henry's installation as prime minister, as did the U.S. and other countries. I, I just wonder if three years later, no elections, the security situation getting worse, was it a mistake to back uh, Ariel Henry uh, the way the Canada did? I don't think it was a matter of backing him. I think it was a matter of saying he was chosen as prime minister by Mr. Moise. Um, uh, therefore, he was the prime minister. Uh, I think if we had not, I mean, you've got a guy who's there. You say, okay, you're there now. This is what we think you need to do. We believe that there needs to be a broadening of the of the transition to an election, and all these things need to happen. Um, and I, I think Mr. Henry did his best. Um, and I think he decided that in, in the end that he decided – I think enough of the political parties that were going to become part of this new process of, of negotiation that we had, I think he felt that, that uh, he, he, need, he needed to recognize that, that the time was up. But I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't spend a lot of time second-guessing what happened because it wasn't, frankly, Canada's position. Canada's position or what we did or what we backed or didn't back not a matter of backing any one person or another. We had no stake. We have no candidate in the game. All we had was to say, this is the process. It's one prime minister. We've got to support stability in Haiti as much as we can because the gang problem was even growing then. And now, of course, it's much it's much worse. Hmm. So, yeah, it's too bad it didn't succeed, but let's let's not give up on the need to address the political transition issue, the humanitarian issue, which is really serious, and the security problem, which is very serious. So these are all things we have to work on. The, the hope has been, as you referenced, that even when Mr. Henri came in to stabilize the security situation and then eventually hold elections, we're still waiting on this, this multinational force uh, led by Kenya uh, uh, to be able to deploy in Haiti at some point in, in some form. Uh, do you think that force can realistically get control of the security situation to have elections? Could you have elections without this being completely under control? What's your sense of how that aligns uh, in the next little while? You know what? I don't think that, you know, pontificating from New York is going to solve the problem. I mean, of course, I have opinions and stuff, but I, I think it's important for us to, to do our job, which is to try to, you know, try to help uh, mediate a process where parties were not agreeing with each other Try to find the basis for an agreement, hmm. um, and then and then we have to say, okay, now we'll work with you, however we can work. And the simple fact of the matter is, if people are afraid to leave their homes to vote, I, I mean, speaking like from any yep. example I can think of, if you're afraid to go outside because you might get killed or you might get kidnapped, you're not going to say, oh, I want to go to the polling station. Uh, so you got to deal with the violence problem. But you don't want to delay the election forever. So these things all go together. Uh, the, Kenyan, the Kenyan deployment, though, appears to be on hold uh, for various reasons, legal and, and otherwise. Um, I, I just wonder if, if this transition in government could also change it on Haiti. You say there's no gap in government, so it shouldn't preclude it at the Haitian end. What's your sense of how quickly, based on developments in Kenya and Haiti, we might see this, uh, this force uh, come into action? Well, there's a lot of work being done now in terms of training, a lot of work being done now to get the equipment together. Um, it's it's not a traditional UN force where the UN says, okay, we'll do it and let's 
get going and, and, and moves forward. And frankly, the budget is provided by the ongoing peacekeeping budget of the UN. This is not such a mission. Hey, guess why? A couple of countries said, mm -hmm. we're gonna veto that if it happens. So I wonder who would like to see a lot of insecurity uh, in the region of the Americas. Oh, look, uh, yeah, the Security Council has not been functioning very well these past few uh, months and years. Well, we have no choice but to go with this multinational mission, which requires a lot more effort in fundraising and in getting it all together. But we are doing that, and it is moving forward. And yes, I believe it's going to happen. Yeah, we've had a report out of Kenya, though. Uh, their, their foreign ministry told Reuters that they've paused the deployment of the police forces to Haiti until until I guess it's clear what's happening with the government. Do, do, do you read that as meaning potentially this transitional council needs to do its work uh, before the Kenyans uh, can arrive? Not at all. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's understandable, but I also think that it's something that we, we all need to work with. Right. One of the things that the, 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 trans, the transition process insists on is that the parties accept Kenya's you know, accepts the UN resolution which established the force. And and that means that the decisions that the previous government made will be continued and the agreements signed by the previous government will be honored. And that I think all is what Kenya, I think Kenya is looking for. They have internal issues with respect to mm -hmm. challenges to the legality of the, of the police being deployed in this way. That's the decision for the courts and for the government of Kenya. But in terms of saying, is there a, a commitment by the, the team that's, that's the group of parties that are coming forward, is there a commitment to continue with the need for addressing the security situation? Absolutely. And, and I think it's important for Kenya to know that and, and for everybody to know. But I think they're probably looking for saying, well, let's wait and see what happens. Um, and that's fine. But I don't, I don't take that as a... As a a bump. Okay. Bob Ray, Canada's ambassador to the United Nations. We always appreciate the time. Thank you, sir. Thank you.